Hey guys, welcome back for another devlog video. I'm ArtDude47, and uh, today we're going to have a big episode. I've got a lot that I want to work on today, uh, but first I'm just going to quickly take you through some changes I made between episodes. You'll probably notice that the background art's different. I just drew a quick sketch this time, tried to make it a little more cartoony. Still not going to be the final art, obviously. I know some of the lines aren't straight and things like that. I just tried to throw it together real quickly so we'd have some more art to look at. That being said, I also redid most of the buttons that I didn't think looked good, so I've got new art for the calendar, for socializing, resting, things like that, so you'll notice that. Uh, those are the big changes that I've made so far. I've got a other, few other things I'm working on, but nothing's done yet, so I'll take you through those when we get there. Uh, the big thing we want to work on this episode, I think we're finally going to add an NPC. We're going to have to deal with interactions, so we're going to try to set up a meeting interaction and things like that. Uh, so with that being said, let's get into it. Alright, so I'm back here in the code, and uh, let me tell you guys, I am having some trouble here. I have been kind of pushing off this episode because I knew there were going to be some issues when adding NPCs that needed to be taken care of that were going to crop up. And so I'm going to tell you a bit about what's been going on, what I've added so far. Uh, first thing, I did make the font size a bit bigger. In my last video, I noticed it might be kind of hard to see the code, especially on like a mobile device. So just let me know if that change is good. But I've got a NPC scriptable object here. We've got the name, portrait. Then I've got a list of sprites currently for emotion portraits. Um, I don't know if for sure that's how I'm going to handle it in the future, but that way I could tag a piece of dialogue, sad, happy, angry, whatever, and then just pull from this list which portrait should display on that dialogue based on the emotion. And then here is where my first issue came up. You'll see I've got a serializable dictionary, uh, string int, and its stat requirements. Basically I decided that the NPCs are going to have certain player stat requirements before you meet them, just like in Tokimeki Memorial. You may have to have a certain intelligence or athleticism or something like that. And I was trying to figure what would be the best way to compare the player's stats with what they need. And so I realized a dictionary is probably the way to do it. Uh, if you don't know, a dictionary is kind of like a list, except for every string there's a matching integer. So if there's a string called athleticism, there would be an integer for the value of athleticism. Uh, so I decided a dictionary. So on my player stats, you'll see I changed it to a dictionary as well, rather than an individual variable for everything. And then on awake, when I set up the player, I just make a new dictionary string int, health 100, humanity 0, and go through all of them. Okay, so that was easy enough, but the problem came with a dictionary um, in the Unity editor. So it led to a problem in the editor uh, because dictionaries aren't serializable by Unity, meaning you can't actually edit a dictionary in the editor, which led to some problems because it kind of defeated the purpose of using a scriptable object. My idea was that I would completely make um, all my NPCs in the editor and be able to easily change them there. So that's when I decided the only way I knew to get around this was make my own customizable data type. So you'll see I've got this serializable dictionary. So I've got a script here. It's a class serializable dictionary. It takes a key and a value and it uh, inherits from dictionary. So it is a dictionary, but it's got two serialized fields, the list of keys and the list of values. And then what we do is we just make a dictionary for it. Okay, so then for here, uh, it extends the base dictionary class and it just makes that new list. And then this is just for the editor on before serialize. Uh, it clears out the list of keys and values. And then for each pair, uh, it adds the, the keys and values that already exist. And then there was an issue of that I was having, so I was I was having it debug.log this to see if it would fix it, and it did, so I commented that out. But basically what was happening is that if I added a new value, it would give me an error because the amount of keys didn't match the amount of values. So now basically this code goes through, and if they don't match, it adds either a key or a value depending on what's missing. 
Uh, so that's really high level what this is doing, but that's basically it. It's just a new dictionary, and all the only difference is that it's serializable in the Unity editor. That being said, I also made a custom editor for uh, MPC scriptable objects. So it extends editor, and it's got the serialized property of stat requirements. And then um, we have it find the property stat requirements in the NPC. And then right here, I've just got the GUI layouts for each thing that I want to be able to edit in the editor. So they're all there. Uh, so that being said, now we can go finally back into Unity. I'll show you my first test NPC. I've called her uh, sports girlfriend, named her Donna after uh, that 70s show. The name's going to change, but I was just trying to test everything out. Uh, I am use this beaker icon as the portrait currently. That won't be the case. And then I don't have any emotion portraits yet. We've got whether or not they met the player and the chance that they're going to meet the player. Stat requirements, you'll see now I've got keys and values, so I've got athletics being 50. And then activities, we've got workout action. This is basically activities that this NPC likes, and that'll be used um, in a minute here when I show you why I did that. And then we've got a dialogue for introductions. If they meet the player, this is what they say. So we'll go back to the NPC scriptable object and we'll finish off here. So I've got that list of activities. Like I said, this is activities that they like. So this is basically if the player's performing this activity, they have a chance to run into that particular NPC because that, that NPC may be doing the same activity. They've got a dialogue for when they introduce themselves to the player. They've got a bool whether or not they've met the player because that should only happen once per playthrough. Bool whether or not the players obtain their phone number. An int for their relationship level. And then we've got this float for meet chance. And that's basically like the percentage chance that they will meet the player. So then I've got this initialize function. This just uh, sets everything back to false and default. So that way when I'm sitting here testing, I don't have to go through and manually do it. So that's all that's doing. Then I've got this NPC manager class. So we've got a list of all the NPCs. We've got a list of available NPCs. And then what I'm calling a daily increase. We set this up as a uh, singleton. We initialize all the NPCs so that way I don't have to manually go through and do it. And then we initialize all available NPCs. And what this does is it makes that list of available NPCs. It goes through each NPC and it sees if the player meets the requirement to meet them. If the player does, then they get added to the list. So that's uh, that's pretty easy what it does here. Uh, so then we'll go through, I've got this update all available NPCs. We clear out available NPCs and then for every NPC in the list of all NPCs, we just check if they meet the requirements and add them to available NPCs. So meet requirements, it takes an NPC and then it goes through every requirement in the npc.stat requirements. And then we can, this is where the dictionary is nice because we could say if player stats dot instance dot stats requirement dot key. And then we do um, is less than requirement dot value. We return false. So basically we're taking the key from the stat requirement. So if it's athletics, we go in player stats and we take a look at athletics. And then we see if the value is less than the requirement value. We return false, otherwise we return true. And if it's returned true, they get added to available NPCs. Then we have this function try to meet NPCs. So this goes through all the player, the NPCs that are in the available NPCs. And you'll see this takes an action. It's the current action the player is performing. And so then it says if NPCs.activity contains the current accents, current action, excuse me, we create a random value. And if random value is um, less than or equal to the NPC meet chance, we start our coroutine to meet the NPC. And then if not, we update the NPC meet chance. So then right here we've got NPC meet chance, the update, and we just add the daily increase. So the reason for this is basically it's random whether or not you're going to meet an NPC that day. While you're doing an action, it checks every single day that you do the action if there's an available NPC to meet and if they like that action. And then it randomly goes based on this NPC's meet chance uh, to determine how likely you are to meet that NPC. So this goes through and if you don't meet them, it updates meet chance, which just adds daily increase, which right in here, you can see is right now 
um, very low. It's a it's a five percent chance is basically what that does. So it increases it by five percent. And the reason I did that is I didn't want to make it solely rely on luck to meet NPCs because then you could potentially get a really unlucky run where it takes forever to meet NPCs even though you've got super high stats. So every single day that you meet the requirements and don't meet that NPC, it gets more likely that you will meet that NPC. All right, so then we've got the um, meet NPC co-routine. So if uh, the NPC hasn't met the player yet, we're going to pause time flow in the time manager. And this is going to get into a whole host of other issues that I ran into, but we'll talk about. And then we're going to fade the screen to black. Uh, so I'll show you that in a second because that's something I've also added. We're going to wait for half a second and then fade the screen back in. We'll update that the NPC has met the player. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the introduction dialogue and making sure that the speaker name and portrait matches what it should. And then we're starting that dialogue in the dialogue system. So that's kind of basically how the meeting of the NPCs works so far. Now, we'll get into the fade to black real quick. So I've got this uh, fade to black UI now, and it just has a panel. And the panel is black, but it's completely see-through right now. And so we've got a fade manager. All it takes is the image of the fade panel, and then it takes the duration of the fade. And so when it fades in, we set the progress to zero, and we do a while loop. While the progress is less than fade duration, progress, we just add time.delta time, and then we uh, lerp the, fact, the um, alpha. So basically we go progress divided by fade duration to get what the alpha should be, and then finally we set a new color on the panel to the alpha. And so all we're doing there when we fade in and fade out is we're changing it to less or more transparent until we've got a completely black screen or a completely transparent panel. All right, so now I think what I'll do is I will play and show you what we've added so far so that way you can see this in action. All right, let me go into the NPC here, make sure we have not met, and I'm going to actually, okay, the meet chance is one. That'll be good because that'll make sure we should meet them. So we've got what should I focus on this week? I will focus on athletics because that's what the current uh, NPC likes. And you see it fades to black and then it comes in. And remember, I've set her to be a beaker icon. So Donna, nice to meet you. My name is Donna. I see you running out here a lot. I love to run. It's just like the example I showed you in the actual game of Tokimeki Memorial. So we continue. Oh, so your art. Well, it's nice meeting you. Hopefully I'll see you around. Now you'll notice the beaker icon disappeared. There's definitely some bugs here that I still need to work out. Like I said, this introduced a lot of bugs when I started working on this. So there's going to be quite a few that I have to work out. Because right now, that's it. I can't continue from here. So meeting works, but continuing the week does not currently work. There's also some weird finicky things. I'm going to play it real quick once again just to show you that I don't love how it's working. So basically when I click this, it's going to say you worked out here in the dialogue manager, but then it's instantly going to go to meeting Donna. So it fades after that changes and then it's it shows you worked out before Donna introduced herself. I don't really love that. And also the reason it fades is because ideally we'll change location. You won't be in your bedroom. Uh, so it'll change to wherever you met Donna, like in Tokimeki Memorial. It, it's like you ran to the local park and you ran into her there. So that will happen eventually. I just haven't coded that in. Uh, but so you can see it here mostly working. We've got an introduction to an NPC that we meet. That's all great. Um, there were a ton of problems when I started doing this with my time manager. So under my scripts, I've got this uh, time manager and this is how we've been going through and handling um, time changes for the whole game. And basically the issue comes from my over-reliance on coroutines. I would have a ton of coroutines running at one time. And not only is that not performant, but a lot of the coroutines were literally just waiting for an amount of seconds before they did something else. And so what we would have is things that needed to happen synced up to each other 
that weren't happening at the same time because their coroutines were running at a different time. So just for an example, uh, like Donna would come and introduce herself, but you wouldn't even see it because the days were going by in a coroutine. Every second, a new day was happening. So she'd introduce herself, but then the new day would happen. And so the player would never see that dialogue, never know she introduced herself. Uh, so that was a problem. Another problem was with the dialogue manager. What would happen is that you would click to skip the typewriter effect and it would actually just skip the typewriter effect and skip to the next dialogue because it was both of those coroutines were running at the same time and detecting for input. So there was a lot of timing issues and basically what I wanted to do was cut down on the amount of coroutines and I'm still working to do that because I think that was the biggest issue. So you'll see there's a few changes I made. Is time paused is a big one that helped me out here. Um, and, and we're using that to pause the flow of days. And so, um, like here, when we, we check move time day, uh, while it's not the weekend day plus plus, we execute the action. Um, we try to meet NPCs now, and then we update the stats. If the time's paused, we just keep returning null until the time is on paused. And then we wait for seconds day length we update the day and then we update weekend status so that's how we're doing it now if the time's paused then we just wait until it's not paused same thing on the move time weekend if the time's paused we're just waiting and it will wait indefinitely until the time on pauses so now when we meet the manager or uh, when we go to the npc manager when we meet an npc um, you see we just call this time manager .instance .pause time flow. So the whole time we're meeting this NPC, time's now paused, so that way it won't move on to the next day. And then only once this NPC's dialog finishes, the dialog manager will unpause the time. So that is the first thing fixed. But like I was showing you, there's still other issues. So the next thing I'm gonna try to tackle really is get rid of coroutines altogether. I think I'm gonna to try to make it less reliant on coroutines. Before I get into working on that, there is one more script I wanna show you, which in this case is the dialogue system script because a lot of things had to change here as well. So first I started using Unity events. We've got one on pause time, one on resume time. And then the other thing I used was a uh, current dialogue state enumerator. So I've got the enumerator here at the bottom. Now we've got idle typing, wait for input. So basically I switched to a state manager rather than relying so much on coroutines here. So we'll just go through real quick exactly what this script will go through if it gets a new dialog. So we've got start dialog dialog. Uh, it sets all the, the UIs to active. And then we've got this function, uh, which I don't think I've showed you. Current dialog dot dialog text equals replace dialog current dialog. So let me show you this function first, because this is new, okay? Uh, replace dialog takes a dialog uh, scriptable object, and basically what it does is it creates a new updated text that is just uh, the, the current dialog text. And what it does, we um, replace anywhere in the text that it says NPC name in brackets, and that actually gets replaced with the, uh, the NPC's name, and then same with the player name it replaces it with the actual player's name, the variable. And then it returns that new string. The reason I'm doing this is now in the Unity editor, I can make the uh, NPC say the player's name without actually having to type the player's name, since I won't always know what the, the player's name is. So I'll show you this. Um, we've got right here, oh, so your art when we met the NPC. We will replace this with oh, so your player name and then if I just go into my player manager we'll change the first name to I don't know Chad we should be able to go ahead and meet this NPC and now it will say that without me having to change any code or anything like that so nice to meet you my name's Donna oh so you're Chad well it's nice meeting you 
so that's that's all that function is doing it's just checking for certain keywords and I may add more keywords in the future and I'll do that by adding a new line and, and looking for the things to replace okay so we're doing that before anything else when we start the dialog now we uh, check if the dialog coroutine is not equal to null meaning it's it's currently typing dialog we stop that coroutine because now we've got a new dialog and then we check if the current dialog's pause time is true. And if it is, we just invoke that function and then our time manager will pause the time or we invoke that event, excuse me. Next, we just disable the speaker name if it's not if there is no speaker name, same with the icon. And then we display the dialog based on the display type. So instant was fine. It just displays the dialog instantly. There wasn't really any problem with that. But typewriter is where we were having some issues because there's a coroutine. So we already looked at replace dialog. Display instant, I'll show you, but like I said, it was fine. It just replaces the dialog. And then it checks if there's dialog uh, options, and if there are, it displays those options. Typewriter, on the other hand, used to not have this current state. So now I change the state to typing whenever it should be typing out. Sets the visible characters to zero skip typing starts out as false and then for each letter in dialog we type them out uh, now when we check if we want to skip we check if the mouse button is zero but we also make sure the current state is typing and then the other thing is I make sure that at least two characters are visible that just makes it so you don't accidentally skip the typewriter effect instantly when nothing's typed out yet uh, if two characters have already been typed out then you probably do actually intend on skipping when you skip so then it skips. And if it skips, it just displays it like it's an instant. Otherwise, we increase the max visible characters, and we play the sound, and then we return wait for seconds typing speed. Next, we go ahead and we um, check if there's any options, and if there are, or if there's a next dialog, we change the state of the state manager to uh, wait for input. And so now we have an update function. If the current state is wait for input and the mouse button is down, then if current dialog is not null, we end the dialog. Uh, so this used to be a coroutine as well. And so we'd call the coroutine there and that's where everything was having issues. So I changed it to an update function and now it only works if the current state is wait for input. So then, uh, Display options hasn't changed at all, and I probably will, but I, need, I haven't gone through that yet, so we won't worry about that yet, or choose options, or clear options. None of those have been changed yet because I haven't been dealing with any dialog that has options. So then we have end dialog, which takes a bool returns time flow, or resume time flow, just whether or not it should. So now we change the current state to dialog.idle because uh, it's no longer waiting for input. I uh, create a temp that is the current dialog so I can set current dialog to null and then if it's the temps not null uh, the next dialog we start the next dialog otherwise if it is then if we are supposed to resume time flow we go ahead and do it and so that just resumes time flow of the day back to normal that is everything I've changed so far uh, so next thing I am gonna work on is making the pausing of the or uh, making once you meet the the NPC making it so you can go back to gameplay uh, seamlessly like Tokameki Memorial so it fades to black and then fades in and you're talking to the NPC once you finish I want it to fade black and fade in and then you're just resuming the game it's it's resuming back so I'll work on that next and I'll check in with you guys once I've got that updated
All right, so you may have noticed in the time lapse that I did struggle a bit with this, but I think I finally got it worked out in a way that is much simpler than what was happening. And it only uses a few new functions. Uh, so to start, I had to add in a few variables. You'll see I've got this float day length, um, which I already had as 1.5 seconds, but now I added elapsed time, uh, which starts out at zero. And then I've got this bool is action selected, which is false. And then I've added the current action as an action SO that we have access to. And so then the first of the three new methods is just the select action, which passes an action and then it sets that to the current action. And it also says is action selected is now true because the action button now when it's clicked calls this select action. So once it's clicked, we know an action has been selected and it's true. So now we've got an update function which just says if the time's not paused and an action is selected, then elapsed time equals time plus delta time. And uh, so this is just keeping track of real time. Then if elapsed time is greater than or equal to day length, so it takes about 1.5 seconds, elapsed time is now zero and we move time. And move time is the final function that we've got here. So first it increments the day. It calls update day, which if you'll recall, updates the actual like string for the day, so that way we can display it to UI. And then it updates whether or not it is currently the weekend. Then we execute the current action. We try to meet NPCs based on the current action. And then we update our stats in the UI. And then there's this switch statement. It gets the current day of the week, says if it's Saturday, then we're going to call our, our dialog system to start this dialog. Today is Saturday. What should you do? Action select is now false, and we break out. If it's Sunday, basically the same thing. We say it's Sunday. Action select is false. Break. And then if it's Monday, uh, we call the spend day dialog. Action selected is false. And then we call our scheduler.check for actions. And that is all that I added to the time manager script. I got rid of all the coroutines, so now there's none running, there's no weird timings happening. And the only other thing I've added so far is there was a new um, method here in our dialog manager, which is just a second form of the start dialog method that only takes a string. And so you'll see here in the time manager, you see how I called um, start dialog and just pass this string. So now the dialog system will take the string, it'll create a new instance of a scriptable object, set the text to the string that was passed, and then call the regular start dialog to display that. And so now I have the scripts working basically back to where we started, except now working much better. So I'll play it just to show you how everything's working fine still once it loads in here. And then uh, next thing I'm gonna do is solve a bug that has been bothering me. So I'll show you. So if we study, study humanities extra hard, you can see the day of the week passing by. Uh, so there's a few things. The, the text takes a little while to update, so we'll get that taken care of. Also, there's some issue with the new method that's causing the name box to appear, so I'll get that taken care of. But so now it's Saturday, we'll study again. Passes on to Sunday, study again. And then Monday we'll work out to meet the NPC. And this is the bug I'm talking about. One, that the icon of the NPC doesn't stay around, and two, the game freezes here, there's nothing I can do. Uh, so that is what I'm gonna get to work on next. It's something to do with how the dialog system's currently working. And so I'm gonna look at implementing a solution. All right, guys. So I'm thinking this episode might be running a bit long, so I'm getting ready to end it. Uh, but I did just wanna show, I did just fix that bug where the game wouldn't continue after you met an NPC. So I just wanna show you real quick in the dialog scriptable object, I added a second enumerator for a dialogue type. I've got system and NPC. Basically looking at the the way the game's working currently, I decided those are basically the only two kinds of dialogues that happen. The system saying, hey, what should we do today? Or you studied very hard. And then you speaking actually with an NPC. Now, so far, 
anytime the system is saying something directly to you as the player, that dialogue is supposed to stay on screen until it gets replaced by a different dialogue. There are no options ever for the player to like respond to these dialogues. And then when the NPC talks to you, that dialogue is supposed to go away when you click. Um, it'll, it'll go back to the next dialogue or it will end that dialogue if there is no next option. And there may be player response options. So differentiating for the dialogue system will help because now we just check basically at the end of uh, the type the dialogue function. We check if there's options or a next dialogue or if it's an NPC dialogue. And if it is, we go to wait for input for our current state. And then once we get the input, we end dialogue. Now at end dialogue, we check if there's a next dialogue. If there is, we just start that dialogue. If not, then we know time was paused because we were talking to an NPC. So we're going to start time back up. And that right there is basically what fixed it. So now we will run the game one last time here for this episode. And you'll see here in the game if I work out, we will meet the NPC Donna. And then it was nice meeting you, hopefully I'll see you around. If I click again, our days continue going. And so now the game doesn't stop. There's still a few things I need to uh, fix, like a fade out once you've met the NPC for the, the day to resume, uh, but we'll, we'll get to that in the next episode. We'll, we'll keep working on getting these NPCs working better in the next few episodes. Uh, but for now, I think that's really going to be it for this episode. So please, as always, uh, like the video, subscribe. It helps out a lot. Uh, comment if you have any questions or thoughts about the game. Uh, I'd be happy to hear from you. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.